The movie opens with a pilot, Brody Torrance, rushing through an airport because he is late for his flight. Despite it being a holiday, Brody has to work. He's just come from Singapore, where he had an altercation with an intoxicated customer. As he tries to clear security to board his plane, Brody receives a phone call from his daughter, Daniela. She's in Hawaii and is concerned that he won't make it in time to celebrate New Year's Eve together. Brody reassures her that he will be there, hoping there won't be any delays. Upon reaching his aircraft, Brody meets his co-pilot, Samuel Dealey. They discuss that the flight officer hasn't yet checked the plane. During their conversation, Deal points out the challenging weather conditions they will face on their route. As they talk, the flight officer arrives and informs them that their aircraft, Trailblazer 119, is set to fly to Tokyo with only 14 passengers. Brody expresses his concern about the weather and proposes an alternate route to avoid it. However, the flight officer interrupts him, suggesting that the weather might clear up by the time they get there. He also mentions that taking an alternative route would add extra hours to the journey, which he deems unnecessary for a nearly empty flight. Brody cannot oppose the two pilots. He agrees to their request. Next, a flight attendant enters the deck and introduces herself as Bonnie. She informs Brody that he is needed in the jetway, where he is met by police officers with a handcuffed person. The man's name is Louis Gaspar, and he is being extradited on charges of homicide. Brody is concerned that a handcuffed felon will make the passengers uneasy. So, he tells the officer to keep away from them. The officer agrees and takes a seat at the end of the plane with Gaspar, shaking off the uneasiness. Brody meets the other flight attendants, Isabella and Maria. They then greet the passengers with a New Year's greeting. Many types of passengers are seen, including Matt Sinclair, a short-tempered businessman, and a bothersome couple who complain about the plane's condition. Brody tells them that the aircraft is fine, trying to assure them of their safety. Another group of passengers consists of Katie, who came with Brie, a social media influencer. They seem to be the original owners of the seat the officer and Gaspar had taken. They follow Maria's instructions to choose a different seat and then attempt to take a photo of Gaspar to document their experience. Gaspar notices it and instantly tells them not to. With everyone settled and their seatbelts secured, Brody briefs the flight over the intercom and takes off. The flight goes smoothly as the flight attendants serve the passengers while the pilots talk to each other about their families. However, things start to take a turn when they encounter the storm they had expected to come across. Brody alerts everyone to fasten their seatbelts and contacts air traffic control to notify them of the situation, but receives no response. As they fly ahead, they get deeper into the storm. Suddenly, a flash of lightning strikes the plane, shaking the whole aircraft and panicking the passengers, leaving Deal in control. Brody goes to the cabin to calm the passengers down and sees a scene with the passengers' belongings lying on the floor due to the strike. He helps the attendants pick them up and tells everyone that it was just the weather. Sinclair bashes him for not controlling the plane well. Brody just ignores him and tells the flight attendants not to let anyone unfasten their seatbelts. Unfortunately, the plane is struck again, making Brody lose his balance and hitting his head, causing it to bleed. Trying his best, he reaches the deck and takes over the flight with the entire power and communication cut off and a big rainstorm ahead. The pilots try their best to find a way to get a signal. They try every possible way but see no solution. Knowing that the battery won't last more than a few minutes, they make an impromptu decision to land the plane anywhere possible. Bonnie informs everyone in the flight of the electrical malfunction and slowly commands them to fasten their seatbelts and not leave their seats, no matter what. With their eyes on the gyro, the pilots do their best to find ways to land. That's when the officer's phone falls from his hands and lands on the floor. The attendants panic at what he might do and continuously warn him, but he decides to be ignorant and goes to pick it up. Isabella, as an attendant, can't help but try to save him, but another strike shakes the whole plane and instantly shoots them off, killing them right then and there. Inside the cockpit, the pilots finally find a suitable place to land, but they only have three minutes before the engines run out. With the clock ticking over their heads, they put all their effort into descending. Just when the plane is about to crash, Brody sees a road and turns the plane in its direction with a lot of difficulty, and the blades of the plane cut through the forest trees. The captain manages to make a successful landing, and everyone celebrates that they are finally on the ground. They figure out that they might be on an island somewhere in the Philippines. Since the airplane hasn't stabilized yet, the passengers are asked to immediately get off of it through the emergency exit. All of the other passengers follow Dali as she goes down. By dawn, everyone is off the plane, safe and relieved. On the contrary, the CEO of the airline sets up a meeting about Trailblazer 119's disappearance, along with Scarsdale, a former Special Forces officer who leads the rescue effort. Scarsdale, upon knowing that the flight officer didn't let Brody take the other route, calls him out for doing so. They come to learn that the plane's signal was last received in Manila, but was soon disconnected. The officers discuss all the possible ways to find its location. Meanwhile, on the island, Bonnie asks Brody about Gaspar, 
and hands over the keys to his handcuffs, which she found while evacuating the plane. Brody and Deal go over the map, trying to locate where they might have possibly landed and find out it is Jolo Island. Della freezes when he hears the name and tells Brody that it is an island where heavily armed anti-militants who are notorious for killing and robbing rule. Brody decides to hide this information from the passengers to avoid causing a state of panic. Sinclair protests that they should stay inside the plane. To this, Brody replies that staying inside the plane is a bad idea due to the power cut and the heat. The passengers take Brody's side and tell Sinclair that he should just appreciate what the pilots did. Instead, he tells them that they might have landed in the Philippines and that they will try to find a way to ask for help. Thereafter, Brody and Deal go to check if they can get the power back on. However, they fail to do so. Brody goes inside the plane and, driven by his curiosity about Gaspar, he checks the officer's bag and gets his gun. It turns out that they want to go find help and take Gaspar with them. Uncuffs Gaspar. The two then set off to look for help. Back at the headquarters in New York, Everyone is still looking for clues, but they find none. Finally, the mercenary black ops are called in for the rescue mission. Going deep into the forest, Brody questions Gaspar about his intentions because he found a pocket knife while going through his belongings. However, a mysterious Gaspar gives him no information. Then, we are introduced to the chief of the anti-militants, Datu Junmar. One of the villagers informs him of the plane's landing close by, close to the mines. Junmar concludes that it could not be the army since his spies didn't give him any such information. Brody, on the other hand, is alone now because Gaspar fled midway. He reaches a warehouse where he is able to make a call after fixing a few circuits. He calls the airlines and notifies them of the whole situation, but the person on the line doesn't understand him well before the line gets cut. Brody then calls his daughter, Daniela, who is worried sick by now. She picks him up and learns everything from him. He then tells her to get the information through to the airlines that they were on Jolo Island. Suddenly, Brody gets attacked from behind. He struggles to break free, and after a long and strenuous effort, Brody manages to knock the attacker down. At the same time, he hears gunshots nearby and readies his gun. Footsteps approach, and it's Gaspar who hands him a rifle. As they make their way down, Brody and Gaspar come across a grim scene, a bunch of dead bodies of people killed by Gaspar. They find a camera with a video that reveals that foreigners were robbed in that place before them. Worried that the same fate will befall the passengers, the duo rushes to them in the robber's van. The passengers happily stand up in the meantime when they hear the vehicles, but the gunshots soon make them uncomfortable. They realize it's not the rescue they had hoped for. Brody and Gaspar arrive just in time but find Junmar and his gang taking over the passengers. They forcefully take the passenger list from Bonnie and demand Brody's whereabouts, but no one tells them where he is. Then, a girl tries to escape and is instantly shot, followed by her boyfriend, who cries for help but meets a merciless end too. The terrified passengers are then evacuated. Brody attempts to interfere and help them, but Gaspar holds him back, knowing that going in front of the robbers would be foolish. Junmar orders two of his men to take everything from the passengers that could give them money. After the group leaves, Brody and Gaspar overpower the remaining rebels and force them to reveal the location of their lair. Brody goes inside the plane again, locates the village on the map, and leaves a message for the rescue team, discovering that Delay somehow managed to fix the electrical system. Back in headquarters, Scarsdale hires the mercenary Black Ops to go to the island after confirming the information with Daniela. Brody and Gaspar reach the village where the passengers are held hostage and slowly eliminate the remaining robbers one by one. They meet up with the remaining passengers, who are only under one man's protection. The duo successfully frees them and takes them to safety. Escaping would only alert the remaining robbers, so Brody goes to distract them, putting his life at risk. He greets the chief and acts as though he doesn't know who he is. This act gets him hit, but at that moment, the assigned rescue team arrives and fires at the robbers, killing many of them. It turns out they reached the plane quickly with the help of Brody's message. They safely reach the bus along with Brody, but Junmar is enraged and orders his remaining men to go to the plane. The rescue team tells Brody that the airline cannot send in a formal team to remove them from the island for another 24 hours, and they do not have enough contingency money to negotiate their way off the island. Brody tells the rescue team that he has another plan. Back on the plane, Brody and his co-pilot, Samuel Deal, manage to fire up the plane and gather everyone inside for takeoff. Scarsdale's group sets up a Barrett M82 anti-material rifle for increased firepower and, together with Gaspar, fights off Junmar's men. Gaspar decides to stay behind to divert Junmar's forces and allow Scarsdale's team to board the plane, thwarting an attempt by Junmar and a terrorist to blow up the plane with an RPG. He then flees into the jungle with a bag of ransom money that the mercenaries had brought. Angered and desperate, 
Junmar attempts to use another RPG in a last-ditch effort to destroy the plane and wounds Brody again, this time in the shoulder. Despite being shot in the leg during the earlier shootout, Brody summons his strength and puts the plane on full throttle. In a dramatic turn of events, the plane's wheels crush Junmar under its weight, ending his threat once and for all, allowing it to take off safely. The plane is significantly damaged and running low on fuel, making a long journey impossible. However, Brody's skill as a pilot shines through as he manages to land the plane safely on the neighboring island of Siasi. Brody takes a moment to call his daughter and inform her that he is returning home as a hero who overcame incredible odds to save lives while the island's rescue team attends to the passengers and crew.